Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve sort colors. Lead code number 75. So we're given an array called nums and there's going to be n objects and they're either colored red, white, or blue. And our job is to sort them in place. So in place means rearrange the elements of that existing array so that objects of the same color are adjacent with the colors in the order of red, then white, then blue. So they're going to use the integers of 0, 1, and 2 to represent the color red, white, and blue respectively. So that means that red is zero, white is one, and blue is two. And it gives a reminder, don't just use a library sort function because that would be a little bit silly. Okay, so given an example here, 202110, you basically just have to sort the array. That's really all it is, is we're given an array where the possible numbers are zero, one, and two, and you just have to sort that array in place. So you have to change around the elements in this array. You can't just return a new sorted array. You have to manipulate this array into its sorted order. Okay. So we're given some array here of zeros, ones, and twos, and we really just need to sort it. So what we want to turn this into is zero, zero, one, and one, and two, and two, where these are the red region, this is the white region, and this is the blue region. Now you can honestly do whatever type of sort that you want for that. Most types of sorts you would never really want to do, like for example, a bubble sort, or an insertion sort, or a selection sort, all of those are going to be O of n squared algorithms. And so that's pretty slow, although you could implement that. There's some faster algorithms, like for example, a quick sort or a merge sort, which are on average, those are going to be O of n log n, which is a lot better. That's tremendously faster than n squared. However, there's one type of sort, which in this circumstance is much better, which is called a counting sort. Now counting sort has an O of n plus k time complexity, where k is the range of data. So we have zeros, we have ones, and we have twos. Our range of data here, k would be three, saying that we have three different possible values in the array. Well, that is a small and fixed number. So if this is a very small fixed number, this would simplify to O of n plus three, which is simply just O of n, meaning that we can actually solve this with a counting sort in O of n time. So this is the time complexity, and it also has an O of one space complexity because it normally has an O of k space or O of three, but again, that gets reduced to O of one. So we can get an O of n time and an O of one space, that is absolutely amazing. Now there is one other thing you could do, which is called the Dutch national flag algorithm. It's basically designed to solve this exact problem, but there's really no reason to do it because it's still going to have a time complexity of O of n, it's going to have a space complexity of O of 1, and it's way harder to write. It would probably be a little bit faster, just because I would say counting sort is basically a two-pass solution, because you have to count everything in the array, and then you have to overwrite it again. So count, you basically go through 2n, and the Dutch national flag algorithm, it's basically 1n, but honestly, it's really not that much of a difference. And in the vast majority of coding interviews, they're really not going to care. So it's better just to do the counting sort, which is the more versatile solution. So the first thing we would do for a counting sort is get our counts array, which is going to have three many positions, because this is the number of zeros we have, this is the number of ones we have, and this is the number of twos that we have. We would just kind of initialize them all to be zero for now. And then we would just iterate through this array and build up the counts. So we would use an index i, for example, see that we're looking at a two. Okay, that means we have one more two. So we would increment that position. We would move this over, see that we have a zero. We would move this over, see we have another two. And when you got to the end of this thing, you would ultimately just see that we have two of each of these numbers. The next thing we're going to do is basically just get three variables, r, w, and b. And those are going to be each of these numbers. So it's going to be what's at this position, what's at this position, and what's at this position. This might not work in all programming languages, but you're basically just saying red is going to be the number at the first index, w at the second index, and b at the last index. You might have to write this a little bit differently in other programming languages. So after you have that, r, w, and b, well, they're all going to be twos for this example. Well, basically, this is the red region here, these two. This is the white region, and this is the blue region. And then you'd basically just go through the array and specify that these should all be zeros, which are reds. You'd go through this region and say these should all be ones, which is white, then you should go through this region and change them to be twos. So we're just overwriting each of these three regions. And again, that's going to be O of n time because you're basically just traversing through this original array. And there's only three values over here. So that's very small. Okay, so let's code this up. Okay, so the code for this is extremely elegant. And I absolutely love it. We'll get the counts It's just going to be an array of three different values, where this will be the number of reds we have, this will be the number of whites, and this will be the number of blues, or this is the number of zeros, 
the number of ones and the number of twos. Then we'll go through the array. So for color in nums, we want to set the counts at the color to go up by one. So the color is the number that's in the array and we're going to index that into our counts array to say at that index here. So if it's a zero, we're saying we have one more of these or if it's a one, we have one more of these. And then we can separate this into our three different variables here. This is called Python unpacking. R, W, and B, so red, white, and blue counts is equal to counts. That just sets R to be the number here, W to be here, and B to be here. Then here you could just overwrite the array in three different pieces. We want nums from the beginning up until R. So these are all of the things that should be reds. We'll set this to equal the array of zeros times R. So R is the number of zeros that we should have. And so this is an array of R many zeros. We're setting this first region all to be zeros. Then we set nums from R up until R plus W. This part is inclusive and this part is exclusive. Now that might take a little bit of thinking, but this is basically just the region that should be replaced by whites, which are going to be ones. So this is going to be the list of one times W. So W many whites. And then the last piece is going to be starting at R plus W. So remember this was exclusive. So we'll start inclusively here and then go up until the end. These are all of the spots that should be blues. So this is going to be the list of two times blue. Now it's crazy. This is actually all of the code. We initialize the counts for red, white, and blue. We go and accumulate those counts. We separate them into their individual variables. And then we basically just go through the array setting the reds, whites, and blues in order. Okay, so if you run that, that is going to work. And if you submit, you are going to pass all of the test cases as well very quickly. So the time complexity of this, well, for a counting sort, it's always going to be O of N plus K, where N is the number of numbers in your array and K is the range of the data. There's just zeros, ones, and twos. So this is basically a three. And so this is just going to be O of N. And the space complexity for counting sort, it's going to be again, O of K, which is just O of three, because we're storing this many counts. But again, O of three is just O of one. So I hope this was helpful, guys. Check out algomap.io in the description if you haven't already. And have a great day. Bye-bye, guys.